Are you a musician or producer who wants to make pro-level hit songs but doesn't have a pro-level budget? I've got just the thing in this video coming up. I'm going to show you how you can make a full, professional, state-of-the-art recording studio in your home for less than $305. Coming up. Welcome back, my name is Jack. Thanks again for tuning into the show. It's my goal to help creative music makers get better at making music at home. In this video, I'm gonna share gear recommendations for some of what I think are the most valuable and budget conscious options for new producers or anyone looking to build a budget home studio. This setup will allow you to start from scratch, but with this list, I am assuming that you have some sort of music production computer to work off of. Now, that could be a laptop or a desktop, but you will need a computer for the rest of these items that I'm gonna recommend to work. The first item is gonna be an audio interface. The audio interface that I recommend is the Focusrite Scarlett Solo. It's a great little interface, and there are cheaper options, but I really recommend this one because of the bundled software that it comes with. It actually comes with free versions of Pro Tools and Ableton that are really gonna allow you to keep your costs down when building this studio setup because you really do need a software. I have had a lot of success with Scarlett interfaces. I've had three or four different interfaces over the years. My current interface is a Scarlett 18i20. I really love their interfaces. They're great products. I've never had an issue with any of them. So I really feel good about recommending this interface. The next piece of gear you're gonna to wanna to buy is a studio condenser microphone. Any microphone would work, but I do really recommend getting a studio condenser microphone because that type of microphone is most commonly used for vocals. One that I recommend is the Behringer C1, and it comes in at about $58, and I think it's a really great budget option for someone that doesn't want to sacrifice sound quality, but wants to stretch their dollar as far as they can. This is a tried and true model. It's been around since the early 2000s, and I've heard a lot of great things about it. Honestly, I would love to have two of these mics just to have in the mic drawer for overheads, to throw them in front of guitar amps. They have great clarity for the price, and I really do recommend the Behringer C1 vocal microphone. Now you've got an interface and you've got a microphone, but you need a cable to connect them. I'm going to recommend just an Amazon Basics XLR cable. 10 foot should be enough. If you need more, you can order more, but these are great cables. You want to have as many of them around the studio as you can. They make mics work. Now that you've got your mic, your interface, and your cable connecting them, you're of course going to need a microphone stand. I found one on Amazon for $20. It's nothing fancy, but it'll definitely get the job done. It's great to have at least one of these in the studio because without it, your microphone's just gonna lay on the table and you're not gonna get a good recording that way. So definitely pick up one of these microphone stands. Hey, if you're enjoying this content, do me a favor and like, comment, and subscribe below. Your support means the world and it will really help enable me to keep making great content like this. Let's get back to it. The next piece of gear is small and easily overlooked but I highly recommend it, and it is a small pop filter. What this does is it prevents large bursts of air from hitting the microphone and overloading the signal. These are highly, highly necessary for any vocal recordings, as the P's and the B's, what we call plosives, they tend to really mess up your vocal recording. So you're gonna to wanna to get one of these, attach it to the mic stand, hold it in front of the microphone to deflect or break up any of those large bursts of air. The next piece of gear I recommend is a high quality pair of studio monitoring headphones. And this is really important because until you're able to afford reference monitors or monitor speakers, you really wanna use high quality monitoring headphones to make sure that you're accurately hearing what you're working on. No, your iPhone earbuds or your Apple earpods just aren't gonna cut it, unfortunately. Now the headphones I recommend are the Audio Technica ATH M20Xs, and they are a great budget-friendly option from a well-known line of headphones. I have the M50Xs, they're a little more expensive, but I know that the M20s are a great budget option. I've got some students that have used them, and it's really nice because you're getting a lot of those high-quality premium features from some of the Audio Technica's more expensive headphones funneled down into their budget-friendly option. If you're looking to save some money, I definitely recommend those headphones. Now the final piece of gear I recommend is a MIDI controller, and this comes in at $50, so it's another good budget option. For those of you who don't play piano, this is still a great piece of equipment to have in the studio. When we work on our computers and we make music using software, having a controller really allows us to play in those notes, play in drums, and it kind of just makes the computer turn into an instrument. So I really do recommend picking up one of these. Question of the day, what are some tips or suggestions that you have for building a home studio on a budget? Let me know in the comments. Once again, all the links are in the description, so if you wanna do some price matching or some more research on your own, do check that out below. Thanks again so much for watching. Before you go, please subscribe, like it if you liked it, and let me know in the comments what video I should make next. Any feedback is super helpful. I am new to this, but I am trying to get better. So thanks again so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Please.